Welcome back, everybody, to the last series of the day here for the Week 6 Challenger Finals. Uh, it's the last uh, opportunity for either of these guys to get through and move on to tomorrow's main event. Uh, it's going to be pretty tightly contested, and it's a rematch from earlier today. We had Flybird against uh, Ozzy, who did manage to pull through barely over Jirachi. Yeah, and both these guys have had some pretty good showings today, but come up a little short in some of their matches. Of course, the winner is going to move on, and you can see right there on your bracket, this was a rematch from the second match we saw of the day, and Flybird managed to take that. So we'll see if he can have a repeat victory, or if Ozzy can claw his way back from that first round loser's bracket and make it all the way to that final round. All right, so uh, Ozzy versus Flybird, do you have any predictions here? Uh, it's tough. So... Um, Ozzy is the only person that's running that zoo lock, and it's been very inconsistent for him today. So if he can shore up a win with that, so is that tough <laughs> to predict? It's very tough, just because of the zoo lock. I think that the swing matchups are usually the warlock matches, and that we can see a lot of these guys pick warlock going in the blind pick. And um, okay, how about now? Okay, because I is... think it heavily favors Ozzy at the moment. Yeah, I would say so. Um, but we've seen a lot of decks that were heavily favored today fall flat on their face. So, Warrior, definitely good against Handlock. Paladin, definitely good against Warrior. And, of course, Ozzy's Zoo. Uh, Druid definitely has a tough time beating Zoo. So, I, I would say so. Now, Flybird did face this exact lineup before with a different lineup for himself. Well, like they matched up differently. And last time, Ozzy seemed to have the advantage in a lot of those matches as well, but came up short. So, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I think we're going to get ready for our first match in uh, just a minute here. But uh, I'm, I'm looking at Warrior versus the Handlock once again. <laughs> and I'm looking at... Uh, that being the deciding matchup, because I really feel like Paladin versus Warrior... Well, you know what? Actually, I changed my mind. A lot of the times, the Paladin was has been actually getting bullied by Warrior, because um, they, they their aggression gets stopped pretty early through Whirlwinds on the Silverhand Recruit. So that matchup's actually closer than I thought, too. Before, I thought it was very lopsided for Paladin, but I guess more I'm leaning towards uh, being a little bit less favored. Uh, and, of course, Druid versus Zoo is very hard as well, so... Yep. Uh, I think an Ozzy is a pretty good chance. That'd be really devastating because Flybird came all the way, you know, from Taiwan to qualify, and he looked pretty good in his first round through. But you know, losing zero three is definitely not good for your momentum. Yeah, Ozzy, of course, uh, coming from the Philippines, so uh, he's over there um, in the Asia's. Uh, it's still late th there for him as well. I think mm -hmm. it's a very similar time zone to uh, to Taiwan. Uh, maybe not quite as late. I think it's a little further uh, towards the states, a little further east. Um, but still, I mean, these guys are getting to the probably the wee hours of the morning over there. So stamina plays a, a big factor into this. We saw Ozzy make some questionable plays in, in one of his matches. I mm -hmm. uh, had a little bit of a flub, and who knows how uh, how tired he can be can can uh, affect his play. Of course, these guys did play through that Sunday Cup, which can go like eight hours and that doesn't even start until uh like 3 p.m so they might be used to playing this late it, it could be but uh it's definitely still uncomfortable either way i know oh, yeah. even if i've gotten used to staying up there was a period where you know you, i got used to staying up because there's so many tournaments but mm -hmm. i was still feeling it yep. a little bit in the hours of the night just you know adjusting to sleep schedules uh, at least if you want to function in normal human society that is <laughs> You could sit in your in your cave of a of a bedroom and be able to do that day after day. Maybe it works for a, for a player. Yeah, I, I don't you really have to have be a seen cave. on camera. I have like a shack. Is that better though? I think I would rather no, have a it's cave. Not better than a shack. at all. It's not better at all. I would rather have a cave. I would rather have a cave as well, because a shack can be burned down. A cave is a cave is tough. A cave is like a control warrior. A shack is like tempo rogue. All right, yeah, that actually that works. I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. Clearly, we're very, we're stalling. By the way, it looks like we're <laughs> we're waiting for our first match of the day. This is what happens, guys, when uh, Battle.net has lock-in issues. 
we have people from Asia and Europe trying to log into North America and uh, playing on very odd time zones. So thank you for bearing with us. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to have an opportunity to sign up, um, you know, if you guys want a chance to play next week's Friday Open Finals and get a chance to qualify for the offline, all you have to do is go to the link below uh, at the Legendary Series and try and qualify by signing up through the Cup. It's on Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you know, if I'm not doing anything Sunday, I think I might try to sign up myself uh, if I'm not too busy. But mm -hmm. it, it's just a fun way for you guys to meet competitors, also do best to try and compete. I know a few of the guys uh, try pretty often, you know, Firebat, Chalky, uh, you know, Hosty. All those guys are still trying to go through. So yep. uh, these top four definitely are some of the best. Yep. Some of the best, but uh, it's cool that a lot of them we don't know that yet. A lot of players originally made their start from uh, from this series. Uh, ESL used to run the King of the Hill series, which was <clears throat> basically the winner of the Sunday Cup moved forward to that, and players like Chalky uh, had a big splash in, in that tournament, so um, some players even made their name from this tournament alone, and $500 worth of prizes every week from that tournament as well. Not only is it fun, you have a chance to win money if you place that high, along with getting invited uh, to the Challenger Finals in the Legendary Series, so Fun stuff, Dan. Fun stuff. I've competed. How'd you do? <clears throat> Top 16 is the highest I have ever gotten, which is actually pretty good. Nice, man. Yeah, I think when you get seated, and if you've never played before, you get seated really low. Uh, but if you've played a couple matches and placed pretty highly before, you can get seated in like the top 50 or 100, and it can give you better chance of getting a first round buy. So the more you compete, uh, you get a very small benefit in that regard. So get out there, play some Hearthstone, man. Okay. Cool stuff. Cool, cool story, stuff. bro. Cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, you're you're absolutely right. These guys definitely have. To, everyone had to start from one place. Um, even the guys that got ahead of everybody else in the very beginning, you know, they they were there doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. they, people look at. You know, players like Ecop and Nimsh, the first people from Doggy House, but and they're like, ah, yeah, they've been there from Hearthstone, but they also played WoW TCG for what, like eight years, yeah, <laughs> like, and w without really getting to the status they are now. So yeah, and it's not like they they have an advantage in the fact that they have a lot of experience in the game, but it's not like they don't have good showings still. Nimsh got made, second at Millennium Cup. Yeah, and Ecop also won a tournament recently. Yeah, and there was a. a post about uh, like tournament winnings and despite ECOP only winning smaller tournaments and uh, placing highly at smaller tournaments, the money that he's got from prize money has added up over time. So mm -hmm. he always has consistent finishes in a lot of tournaments that he plays in. So they, even though they got in early, they still consistently place over the course of their careers. Why did Fiber not play his zombie child, you think? Because I would imagine it's pretty good to keep in check the armor accounts, or maybe he's gonna play it now because his opponent didn't have armor before. Whoa! Oh, he was—he's going first, so oh, okay, never mind. I misread the hands. Yeah. If he's going first and he can't play Mountain Giant, okay, yeah, makes total sense. Yeah. Which can be a little awkward, but a lot of handlocks put in Zombie Chow just to short those aggro matchups. But yeah, for sure. Otherwise, you cut the Zombie Chows and just add like Ragnaros. Or Snake's old shredder. Snake's old shredder would be so cool if you could like immediately kill it off. I guess you could if you had power overwhelming. But, yeah. <laughs> then why? <laughs> hmm. Then wouldn't it be like a waste trading two cards, one of them being a legendary, for another random legendary? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I'm just thinking like, how can you trigger it? Because in Hunter, the cool thing you can do is feign death. Inside Frodan's mind. Right. Oh yeah, Feign Death. That's right. I've that tried with that, Feign Death Hunter. It's very fun. Do you play Sneeds in that? Uh, I do, personally. I think it, it's not It's not recommended. It's very slow. But, but uh, right. It's not recommended, but I do. I, I, I play it very mid-range and slow. Like There's Sneeds, there's Sylvanas, there's... Uh, that seems like a really fun deck. Yeah, it's very good. You can tell that Dan and I have watched a lot of Warrior vs. Handlock over the past couple weeks. Because we, <laughs> we are showing so much interest in this game right we now. Do, we don't even pay attention to the first six turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
if people who are just tuning in are like, God, these commentators just don't know anything about Warrior versus Handlock, you're, you're absolutely right, and your feeling is justified. I think we've spilled out all of our knowledge about Warrior vs. Handlock in like the first ten that we broadcasted l two weeks ago. But uh, you know, let's do our due diligence as well. Um, Indeed. I think one of the X factors here definitely will be cards like Harrison Jones and how high of an impact he can have, because uh, there's going to be a point where Warrior is going to be threatening to yep. try and kill off the Handlock player at all times. Like yep. every single time, you'll have the dagger like to the nose. Is that how it dagger to the chest? The throat, maybe? The throat, yeah. Dagger to the throat. There you go. And threatening to kill him, but he can't do it unless he has the actual mana to. Dagger. So Harrison. Dagger to the nose. Dagger to the nose. <laughs> no, <laughs> not the face. <laughs> not the face. I guess it's the, it's like the part of the body that man. protrudes the most. Right. It's the easiest to reach. That's assuming true. Assuming their limbs aren't stuck out. That's but. true. But you have to still have to go in pretty far from the nose to... It's it's very close to the brain if you go in. That's why like oh, yeah, they encourage true. you to strike with your palms. Who's instead they? Of, instead, of your, instead, of, <laughs> instead of your knuckles, because a lot of people punch with their knuckles, that's what mm -hmm. they think. But if you strike with your palms, and you push up from the nose, you could kill people because it like, Whoa. it breaks the cartilage and it like inserts the brain and stuff. <laughs> so people are like, cool. And they're trying on themselves. They like smack <laughs> themselves in the face. Like no. Two percent of the people Stop that are it. watching right now just. Hit themselves in the nose to see how much it would hurt. To see how much brain they could hit. Well, we're roping out right now. Yeah, he he's really debating if he can strike here with uh, the zombie chow. Or against the zombie chow, rather. I don't think it's wrong. I think... Ooh, he holds off. I think you want to definitely take away the power of Hellfire, though. But, uh... I, th I don't think there's any reason to not do it, because then you... Lose more of your armor. Oh wow, this is a pretty good Hellfire. He could Hellfire, though the zo he doesn't even have to. Oh well, it could be really risky. Yeah, the boom bots is what makes it complicated. Yeah. But the Hellfire generally can be very strong here. I also don't mind him, like evaluating the bombs first and then playing things, because. Um, mm -hmm. They have to they have to roll very high. So if you hellfire, it's asking for you to to get punished. Because if you hellfire here, he might just destroy everything. It's very true. It's very hard. What if you just big game hunter? What if you just Doctor Boom yourself? Like why not? What's holding you back from playing Doctor Boom yourself? If you if you play Doctor Boom and then you attack the face. Yeah. I think that's... Oh no, he's gonna go for what looks to be a Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame BGH? Okay. Ah, that's ah. actually very good. Yes, it is. In fact, um, they both rolled high, so he's gonna get close to playing the Molten Giant soon. Ah, that's a, a pretty good line of play, and this Sludge Belcher is very problematic for Ozzy as well. Because you don't want to have to remove, you don't want to have to use a lot of removal on it, but at the same time, it still poses a pretty big threat. Yeah. I think, um. I feel like he wants to play Sylvanas to try and answer the board, but it doesn't feel very powerful. The alternative is to set up a weapon with the Sludge Belcher, but that also feels pretty weak. Most of the plays seem pretty weak. I think I, I, I'm leaning towards the Sludge Belcher play a little bit more. Just for the curve? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Sylvanas, I think, is a slightly better play. Well, I don't even know. I think, I don't even I think, think that's it true. also depends on what you want to do the following turn as well. Yeah. The following turn is equally weak. You still don't. You still need a way to set up uh, a possible kill with Gromash. <sighs> that curve. Well, yeah, it fills out the curve. The second thing is you can still play Savas next turn, and you can set up for a Gromash kill anytime. The only thing is that you do need to use Death Spite eventually. So, next turn, do you play Death Spite? And swing with it, so that way you can activate Gromosh on the following. 
to potentially kill. Would he be that close to, to a kill? I guess it is a little bit optimistic that your opponent won't gain any health or do anything about it. Yeah, it seems like you're thinking of like one step ahead of... A little bit too far ahead? Yeah, you're only... Uh, it, it's always a good thing to think ahead and to sort of plan out your turns, but... You're right, Optim being overly optimistic against Hanlock can sometimes be a bad thing. With that knife so close to his nose. No, man, not the nose. Letting up your strength because you, you're you pretty sure that your knife is going gonna, is gonna to connect. And then he's... <laughs> oh, gosh. And then let's he just gets a just, surge of adrenaline. the analogy. <laughs> surge of adrenaline. <laughs> okay, I'm done. No more. No more. No more analogies. Hmm. Okay, well, Harrison Jones, like we said, it, it, it doesn't stop or disarm the uh, the weapon from, like, the death spite, but, oh, he does cash in the value before Black Knight can come into play. So Ozzy was the guy with the Black Knight in the warrior. Okay. Oh, so Flybird played around Black Knight as well. That's very good. Heads up play. Yeah, he got bitten in almost this exact scenario in the last time. It was it was Handlock versus Warrior. And so, he knows better. Yep. I do like the idea of setting up Death Spite very soon. So that way, um, you know, you do have the opportunity to <clears throat> go for Alex Straza and then like try to set it up. It is definitely leaning towards the optimistic side, but you just don't know if maybe you have the opportunity to kill him. We know that there's like plenty of op op options to stop it, whether it's taunts or removing and gaining life. But I think it's like your duty as a warrior player to try and set up a potential kill. Well, he actually used the execute on the Harrison Jones. Which I think huh. is very. I don't even know. Well, it's I want to call punish it. Because... I want to call it safe, but I don't even know if that's safe. No, I think. Well, it's wasteful. Um, yeah. Because considering he just took a lot of damage. Oh, okay. Never mind. Everything is okay. Right. Yeah. What else is there to really think about? Uh, you actually have to be very careful. I think the first thing is you're probably dealing with like the oh wow he has Alex Straza moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? What deck am I playing against? Handlock. I'm Man. waiting for you to draw comparisons of how this handlock's a little bit like Control Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man. Okay, the only the only people deck are that not I'm... really getting it, but TJ likes he likens everything to Control Warrior. Not everything. Only decks that feel like Control Warrior. It's like we're eating a salad. It's like. Like, what, what's, what's in this salad? It's like, I think there's some, like, you know, chicken teriyaki. He's like, oh, this reminds me of a little bit like Control War. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're trying too hard, man, to be profound. The only two decks that I said are like Control Warrior <laughs> are Darkwanic's Warlock, which you have to admit is almost <laughs> exactly like Control War. No, I said it was like Miracle. No, it's like Control War. I said it functioned like Miracle. You draw a lot of cards, you control until you get your combo. Like Leroy combo equivalent. Oh, like Control Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you said, mir yeah, and Control then Rogue. Right. Which you draw a lot of cards, and you <sighs> control the board. But anyways, the until joke you have is everything reminds him of Control Warrior. This Handlock though does not remind <laughs> me of Control Warrior. It reminds me of Handlock with Alex Straza. Oh. That's what it is. <laughs> well, I think he's in trouble here. Yep. Um, he has he can k guarantee kill everything off with brawl execute, but he's he's stifling his own development of the board. And I think Ozzy took a very big risk and it hasn't paid off. No, he <sighs> he was really hoping that um, his opponent would be able to give him an opening for Gromash to finish, but I think he took it a little too far. I swear his face changed since the last still picture he that changed we saw. changed shirts. <laughs> In his still picture. He looks a little more vulnerable now. 
Maybe that's just my mind playing tricks on me. Now that he's actually vulnerable in the game. Oh yeah, it's true. I, I look guess. at his face and like he is looking like he's about to die any second. Whereas the last in the last match, it, it seemed like he, he was looking stoic and strong, stone-like for sure. Well, brawl! Oh no, he's gonna run out of time. No! He didn't even armor up. Oh no! Did he get it? Did he get it? Did he get it? Did he get it? Nope. Oh. The floating execute of doom. GG. And sometimes the rope can come back to bite you, and Ozzy learns that the hard way. It was looking pretty grim for him, though. Even without that roping out of that situation, he probably still would have uh, have ended up losing that game. But that's pretty heartbreaking. Are you confused? No, I'm Worried? sad, man. Sad. sad. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering. I was trying to gauge that emotion. Um, I'm pretty. I'm just sad because it's just you know there's so many cards, so many legendaries that didn't get played. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I was thinking you were gonna go a different direction with that sadness. Yeah. But mourning for the the loss of unplayed legendaries. Untapped potential. Mm. There was a lot of other things he could have done, but uh, it, it was also he took a line that he needed to keep following. He just refused to, and mm -hmm. it was too late. So anyways, uh, that's going to do it for game number one. We're going to go straight into Paladin versus Warrior. And this is a matchup that every time I say Paladin is very favored in, it seems to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to stick out my neck one more time okay, and say that this matchup feels almost unlosable for Paladin. Whoa! The only bold. way you can usually lose is because... You get so much card advantage over Warrior naturally through your hero power. Mm -hmm. The way you can lose is through giving them a lot of draws off Acolyte or a combined force of you having an absolutely atrocious start and then Warrior having a great start. This is one of those times where I'm going to go ahead and agree with you and say that Paladin is favored. I would say that Paladin is favored in this matchup. But I don't think it's nearly unwinnable for the warrior. I think it's closer to 60-40 in favor of the paladin. Okay, I'm going to say like closer to 75-25 or 80-20. Um, okay. That's how lopsided it feels to me. Okay. Whenever you're playing as the warrior. But a couple of things did come into pass where you do have some good mid-range threats that can give paladin a hard time. Um, I think Dr. Boom is also very strong against paladin. It matches with the hero power very well, and then it fights for board much better, and you get tempo back. Uh, but I like the point that you made about getting an eight card advantage because of the hero power, because without whirlwind effects, it's very tough for warriors to be able to deal with those one ones, right? Those tokens. Even if you do have it, it might be too late. Yeah, exactly. They could get buffed up by a quartermaster, um, and having to use like weapon charges to take out individual one ones. Like fire war axe to take out to those, uh, take out the dudes. Ah, just you're you're trading cards for oh, virtually man. nothing. Oh, that paladin start though. Well, we know he's running cult master, so that's a. Oh boy, double acolyte start. Okay, every single time, every single time, <laughs> TJ, that I predict that paladin will destroy the warrior, it happens the opposite way. Maybe it's and fake. it happens exactly the way I'm talking about it too. Maybe it's Warrior fake. is gonna get value off the accolade. Paladin is gonna be forced to not hero power, and Warrior's gonna draw. Wow. Big swing. Oh my gosh. Well, there's equality. That helps. But you're right. Okay, so now all of a sudden the percentages have e almost equalized already. <gasps> Whoa! Oh. Ozzy. I was not prepared or or expecting that. Ozzy just doesn't even care right now. He's saying, you know what? What? Screw your acolyte of pain. Alright. Alright, we'll play play the second acolyte. Clearly he has a very like he doesn't have anything else to do, right? 
BGH, an empty board on turn well, three I mean, against the Paladin. What does that say about the Paladin hand? It's bad. Well, he doesn't have a way to deal with the Ackle. Yeah. So why don't I play a second Ackle? If he like? had two silver champion, do you think he'd wait? Do you think he'd did he, do you think he'd let that go and then just kill off the one two? I think so. I think I think you wouldn't be able to necessarily make that prediction that he doesn't have it. So playing the Accolade here is okay. That's the number one thing you're afraid of right now. You're afraid of the Accolade just dying in one shot. But he's not going to. And in now, fact, now Paladin lost his draw engine. And he drew Muster of Battle and didn't play it. So now Muster of Battle is virtually useless until that second Death by Charge comes out. It's also vulnerable to Harrison Jones, too. Yeah. And like we said, if the Warrior can get ahead in card advantage, then it's just laughable. Wow. Uh. Gonna draw even more cards. Yeah, he's gonna hold on to it. I don't think there's any reason not to at this yeah. point. There was a. I mean, he could have cleared the board if he attacked the Divine Shield first. The Whirlwind would have come in after the pop, and he would have cleared the board. You, but but you he would've would have given up his accolade. Yeah. So instead, he wouldn't have gotten three draws. So he's being very greedy. I I have to kind of chalk this up and say that I think Ozzy's very tired and and he's not playing his best right now. He played much better at the beginning of the day than he is right now. Yeah, you can tell how tired he is. He virtually hasn't moved. <laughs> that, was so, that was such a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. So Consecration didn't do anything here either. Concentration actually does have value in this matchup. Um, oftentimes because you have these 1-1s one -one lining up and at one point you need to clear the board. I think you hold on to the death bite once again. Yeah, that's fair. The second sludge belcher. Somewhat amazing that you don't have any of your mid range threats whatsoever. You have almost all of your late game legendaries other than Alex Straza. And if you're gonna have a handful of late game legendaries, I think Alex Straza would be one of the ones you want. Sure. First. Especially in, in this type of environment for the Warrior when you're dictating the pace and the Paladin's having to react to you with poor answers. Mm -hmm. These are the types of games as a Warrior where if I'll, it feels like you just Alex shots to turn 9 and win on turn 10. Like th this is, like that's a, a definite possibility in these types of games if you're the Warrior player. Ouch. I, I mean, I guess he needs to sort of get that second death bite charge out of the way. Yeah, but it's going to be a full clear. Yeah. A full clear, and he's still going to preserve his. Most of his Sludge Belcher. And he's going to gain armor from it as well, so. This is looking pretty rough for Ozzy. So, Flybird has to be careful not to get too crazy here and set up a weapon, because his opponent might have Harrison Jones, and that yep. might allow him to pull back. So he should not uh, set up the Fiery War Axe, even though he's tempted to. Good. Yeah, Flybird's playing very well right now. Yeah, definitely agree. And, uh, I mean, Ozzy now has an opportunity to go for Muster for battle, but everything gets challenged by the Armorsmith. Yeah. Tyrion, it's just like, he doesn't have enough... He can he can equalize the game if he gets optimal value. Like if you absolutely destroy, thing, like if you kill everything on board and use your weapon to kill three off things, then you're equal. Because look, Warrior has the uh, the advantage on the board in terms of sheer numbers, and they and he has almost a full hand. And when Paladin has half, that just goes to show you how many cards ahead. If you just simply count it up, like say the Sludge Belcher, Armor Smith plus the Slime is like one card. That's two plus the nine in hand. It's eleven. Town has five. Just, just think about that magnitude scale of things. And he was forced to use that draw engine earlier in the game. Right. Just to sort of thwart like additional draws from the Acolyte of Pain. Right. It's just so, so rough. Still a pretty decent draw here. You needed to answer it. Um, one of the things that you're worried about with Dr. Boom always in the back of your mind is, do I just die if he attacks me? Uh huh. And uh, you don't for now. You turn him into Bulvar. 
silence Bolvar. What if Bolvar brought two Silverhand recruits that may explode? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what Dr. Boom is right now. Then that would make him a good card. <laughs> that's exactly what Dr. Boom is right now. But you can't reverse silence a Bolvar. Um. Well, you can. Yeah, you can. You could. You can time warp it back to your hand. Spare parts. Oh yeah, or a youthful brewmaster, right? But then he'd reset, right? Oh, oh, you mean restore it back to like its original attack? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. like if um, yeah, Doctor Boom got Aldor Peacekeeper, then you could. So what you do is um, you play Muster for battle. Okay. Uh, on a Blingtron Deathbite that you have. Okay. And then um, it destroys the one ones, and then you re you bounce back Bolvar, and then you coin him out. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you completely lost me there. Oh but man, I think I'll he's agree dead. with you. Oh wait, never mind, he got it out. I thought he didn't get out the Alder Peacekeeper in time. We could have been in for a very similar situation as we saw yeah. in the last game, but I, even though he's not dead this turn, it's it seems like it's only a matter of time. There's just so many big threats that Flybird has at right. his disposal right now. All you have to do is uh, set up. The weapon to kill with Gromosh next turn. Mm -hmm. Or, you okay. know, just Rag. I don't like Rag as much. Yeah, I like uh, Despite. Well, there's not really a great play to make after Despite, except for Armorsmith. It's fine. Just attack the face. <laughs> That's all you need to do, really. What now? You don't want to clear off? Well, I guess that wouldn't. you wouldn't be setting up for Gromosh with that play. I think this is still okay. It's okay, but um, this plays around eh. taunts. It's still like he's still dead. Yeah. How do you deal with this if you're Ozzy? You have to taunt up with everything you got. Like, mm. oh man, you kill off Doctor Boom and Armor Smith, then uh, you taunt up Pilot Shredder. No, you 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 want to play Muster for Battle, but you can't because it destroys your Ashbringer. You're dead if you do that. First World Paladin problems. Too many weapons. Dead, I tell you. My seal for it's okay, Dan. Maybe Paladin will have better time tomorrow. Let's see. Is there is there lethal here guaranteed? I don't think so, but nope. I'm still in favor of just simply like going for it. Just like Fire War Axe and then like Sylvanas. Or even uh, Fire War Axe Gromosh. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I guess you don't want to over, over, ex definitely super overextend in case on the off chance that he has like a quality, clears your board and lay on hands. But, um,. Still a very strong likelihood Flybird's ran run away with this game. Shield faded. Alright, I'm sensing Ragnaros ends this game right here, right now. <laughs> and there it is. It's gone on too long. Because, like, you can definitely tell that, like, at a certain point, Ozzy just felt like the game was over. Yeah. But, you know, just because you don't want to concede when the game hasn't clearly been decided. You and your mind feel defeated, and uh, yeah. I definitely felt like that was communicated through Ozzy's play. Yeah. Ozzy was that guy that's at the party that's just sticking around way, way too long when he should have gone home about two hours ago. The la Hey, I was having a good time. And Rags, Rag just came in, and he was that friend that... Rag that, was the bouncer? Yeah, he was the bouncer. Gotcha. So... Yeah, he's got to go. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that brings us to what potentially could be the last game of the night, Druid versus Warlock. Once again, by the way, I was telling you, Paladin versus Warrior goes to the war side. This matchup, though, really is tough for the Druid. Like, the Druid has a hard time keeping up with all the snowball -y builds, um build-up from yeah. Zoo. And especially with Flybird's Druid, because we saw earlier that Gooby was running a little bit of a faster Druid. He was able to take 
a, a game off a of handlock because you, you can find more openings with the fast druid. I think the the ramp druid though is still does have ways it can fight back. It does it's definitely reliant upon the same exact things as a normal druid, whether it's starting fast through removal like yeah. innervate keeper. But there's a very finite line where it just stops killing stuff because you have too many taunts. You have mm -hmm. ancient of wards. You have sun walkers. You have other stuff. Yeah, it seems like you. As that ramp druid, when you get to the point where you put out a threat and the warlock puts out a bigger threat, or you put out a threat, the warlock deals with it and then puts out a threat, mm -hmm. uh, you just get one upped every single uh, turn after turn after turn. So a lot does depend on the start of zoo too. Oh yeah, I forgot this is zoo lock. Yep. Whoops. Okay, so flybird does have early game play. One of the dangers of ramp druid is just hero power until turn four. Yeah. This is a pretty okay start uh, for Ozzy in the sense that he does curve, but um, it's not pretty in the sense he doesn't get to put much pressure with this Undertaker before he gets silenced. So most likely what will happen is uh, Flybird will wild growth, and then Ozzy will play Haunted Creeper, and then he just silences the Undertaker. Well, Harrison Jones is not the best draw, but it's still a body. It's, a, it's on curve as well. Yeah. It gets destroyed by implosion, though. Potentially. <laughs> but implosion knife juggler is actually a really great combination. Do you coin out the void walker? I don't think so. Because what are you protecting it from? What are you protecting the undertaker from? Claw. <laughs> yeah. I think that coin just Bite. has way more value than just throwing out a, yeah, an extra damage with the Voidwalker. This seems like a pretty straightforward play. Well, we're not. See, I guess he's making a read that his opponent has a slow hand. Like, he can't build off the momentum of Undertaker. Because mm -hmm. the danger is, what if he drops three one-drops that has, like, Leper Gnome, Clockwork Gnome, and then... You know, another leopard gnome. It's like, well, this all of a sudden turned into a 5 6, and then you just regret everything. But since his opponent only played the Haunted Creeper, held well, onto the coin. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he knows that he, he's probably safe to play this. Now, this is like a legitimate case for Voidwalker. Because now he's actually protecting the Undertaker from. Oh, he's right. going to crash the Haunted Creeper and say, screw it. If you have the swipe, you got it. Four also, juggles. Please, no Doomsayer. It can't oh, yeah, even That's what happens after. Huh. Well, <laughs> he can't um, kill it off with the Undertaker. That's a Master Swordsmith. That's awkward. He was expecting to be able so, to kill some whenever he people came legitimately out. don't know what that card is because they, ha they don't see it very often. In the early iterations of Zoom. <gasps> Whoa! That's a card. Yeah, the swipe is effectively like bringing him back into this game single-handedly. Because now, the swipe, like he just has to endure. Like, like okay, the swipe does so many things. Not only does it stop damage and kill minions, but also it reduces the minion count. So that way, Sea Giant doesn't become cheaper and easier to play for a tempo. Because next turn, what would have happened is he would have played Sea Giant for really cheap with Implosion and Sea Giant. Yeah. What a big draw. And I really hope Flybird is not going to play super greedy with this. No. There, there's just no way. No, no way. And he, actually decides to hold on to the Undertaker. He's playing super greedy with it in the sense that he's not killing off Undertaker. Yeah. Because he's making the read that, once again, Ozzy doesn't have death rattles. And, and he's still got the Keeper. So if it gets out of control, he's got a way to be able to, right. to bring, it, bring it down a notch. To make it simmer down. Oh man, if I'm Ozzy, I'm pretty heartbroken because that looks like a runaway win at one point. Yeah, you can tell by his face. <laughs> <laughs> He's just r having a really rough time now showing emotion. Stoic. Hardened. <laughs> Ozzy. <laughs> Be a great name for <laughs> his movie Coming title. Coming to <laughs> <laughs> This fall. <laughs> Straight to DVD. 
Not even release the movie theater. <laughs> We're going to fold the interview on this one. <laughs> oh. oh man. Well. Uh. So, if he silences now, there's only three power on board. Uh, actually, Sylvanas is legitimate here too. Uh, you could. I would say Sylvanas is pretty good because you could challenge like a sea giant if it came out. You're at a health level enough where you're, you're, you're okay, and if he plays Doom Guard, you can challenge it openly. I was not expecting to the claw. Doesn't play on the curve well at all, and Doom Guard would. Okay. Well, he's about to get punished big time. Oh! Rough times yeah. are ahead for, for Flybird here. He took so many gambles this game. And now there's going to be the Sea Giant, cheap Sea Giant coming down next turn. I must yeah. He almost did two damage to his face. Well, he's going to silence it. He was going to silence his face. And then he couldn't emote it anymore. <laughs> So he can... Oh, he can't play his whole hand. There's definitely a way to do this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me think. So you put the, the doggy, kill off the keeper, the grove. Trade into... Or kill off one. Then see giant. I feel like there's a way for you to play everything and tap. There has to be. This is definitely a puzzle in itself. You have to kill off the Haunted Creeper, so you kill off... No, I don't know. Actually, there's no way, there's no way. He's he's going through it too. You just want to make sure you optimize everything. The cheapest the Sea Giant could ever be... Well, is one. at this turn, would be one. You're right. So there would be no way. Okay. But, fun puzzle, Frodan. Yeah, you're correct, you're correct. Now, if your opponent had a Haunted Creeper, then it would be then a different story. Then it could story. have been zero. Yep. Alright, well, just like that. Wait, what? He's not going to play a Sea Giant? Why wouldn't you play the Sea Giant? He doesn't want to show it. He doesn't want to show the Sea Giant for the next game. I guess he thinks he's in a really good position to win this game regardless, so... If and his opponent has swipe, though, this telegraphs that Ozzy's gonna play Zoo in the blind pick, or isn't feels inclined to. But if he plays Sea Giant and then he BGHs next turn, BGH and Sylvanas. Hmm. I don't know. I th oh well, never mind. I really feel like matter. oh, he's gonna have to reveal the Sea Giant. He's gonna have to reveal it. Why would he? Oh, because he... he's gonna lose it anyway with the Doom Guard. Oh, okay. Just, just kill him. It's okay. It's okay, Ozzy. Either way, he sees your entire hand. Oh, Ozzy is on the board, and that does it for game number three. But we were expecting this matchup to go to the zoo. Yeah. Very difficult for Druid. Yeah. And I, I can imagine Flybird will pick one of his other decks going in this last match. He, he, he's got to be pretty sure that Ozzy will lean towards that. The zoo lock. That's what he's done in both blind picks right. that he's been and then he's going to lean towards hand lock. Mm -hmm. And I think we got hand lock versus zoo. It's the same thing that happened in the second match of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Flybird had double mole giants in his opening I wonder hand. if he feels inclined to try his uh, warrior at all. But I, I don't think so. I don't think that's what you want. Warrior is better against Zoo than it ever has been, mm -hmm. but it still feels very hit or miss. Depends on his start and your start. Yeah. So I think Handlock is still very good because no matter yeah. what, the next draw still could be the one that helps you swing the game. Yeah. So this is very similar to what we saw earlier, and it is going to be Warlock versus Warlock. So we were in this exact same position with Flybird up two to one, and Flybird and Aussie's first match for the day, and Flybird took it. Will he repeat? If he does, he does secure a spot in tomorrow's match day for the Legendary Series. Has a chance to get to that $20,000 land final. 
also wins a little bit more money as well. So that's always a good thing. Well, I think the spot here is really what's um, is really what matters the most. It does. I agree. Uh, and well, we'll see if Ozzy can pick it up. Uh, he's definitely more fond of the zoo deck. It's everything. It's every time it's gone to the blind pick stage, he's chosen it, and it's carried him far. So uh, so far, so good when it comes to zoo. Now, it's not a good hand against zoo for Flatbird. No, but at least he can't mulligan it back and draw Mountain Giant. A lot of times maybe you toss back and you get Mountain Giant and you're like, ugh. So you keep the Ancient Watcher for sure and toss back the other two Mountain Giants. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile in Zoo's hand, Doom Guard is not preferable. You want to have things that curve out nicely. If you have Flame Imp, I think that's keepable. I would actually be okay keeping Knife Juggler as well. Yeah, I would say so as well. But throws it away. Doesn't get the greatest, but a Molten Giant and Flybirds. Okay. That's a good card, but the other two maybe not so much. Shadow Flame is going to be okay because it gives him at least some AoE to be able to deal with the Zeus board. That's great. I guess I definitely would rather have um, Hellfire. Yeah, Hellfire than Shadow Flame. Yeah. But would you rather have an Ancient Watch than Shadow Flame? Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to wait longer to use it. I think Hellfire stopping the zoo's first push a lot of the times can be enough to allow you to stabilize later on. Sure. So being able to use it on turn four as opposed to turn six could be a little better. Debatable. Mm. Well, Ozzy's taking his time on this one, thinking about how he wants to line up his turn one for optimal damage, but I'm pretty sure just following the curve is okay here. Coin echoing is... Well then. I guess next turn he just he's gonna just play the two minions, but you put out less power on the board. Like, if you just play Flame Imp, it's three damage as opposed to two. Yeah. I mean, if you consider an abusive sergeant... That's, that's actually really good news for Flybird, because it's like... It telegraphs that he doesn't have actually like a good turn one play, which is actually quite the opposite. The opposite is true. He had a great turn one play. Flame him's fine. Well, with Abusive Sergeant, it's a little bit more power. But uh, you're just overextending on board and not using that Abusive Sergeant later on for either a little bit of extra burst of damage, maybe to get through a taunt. Right. Oh, I guess you're right. If you put it that way... I think you play... Is it too greedy to tap for a Mountain Giant? No, I think you have Twilight Drake anyways. Zombie Chow? You'll be taking 5 damage next turn to 19. You'll be at 17. And then you play... And then you take another 5. So you'll be at 12. You have Molten Giant. It's very tight. Greedy play from Flybird. But you know what? He has a lead. Maybe he can definitely snowball this. And he does have Molten Giant and Taunts. He seems to be a greedy player in general. Yeah. A lot of times it pays off. So Mountain Giant. Ah, you know, he also has a... Uh... Oh, I didn't think about this. He has Zombie Chow and Shadow Flame. It's not often that you have an opportunity to use a, a Mountain Giant safely against right. Zoo. When you're playing, when you're the handlock player, but he's got like a contingency plan. Cause the problem I was wondering was like, how is he gonna stop the damage flow? Cause, but what happens is, if his opponent attacks in full force, he's gonna be as, he's gonna have free molten giant, and he can shadow flame, the um, the zombie chow for five mana. All of that for five mana. Have a full board clear, and then have so, uh, sixteen points of damage to start pushing back. Yeah. With Sludge Belcher, with Taunts to follow it up, and uh, you know more ways to start adding on. I feel like that was actually a very good gamble from Flybird. Yeah. Because right now, unless he plays the Dark Iron Dwarf and right. pushes through, any other line of play will be completely susceptible to uh, that combination that you just listed. And this is going to be exactly it. He's going to push in for damage, and that's a very juicy board. I mean, Ozzy just plays very aggressive in general. 
He does have silence, though. This is one of the things that always is very disconcerting: is the is the is the silence to get past taunts. Mm -hmm. So, as much as you can taunt up after this turn, you also want to gain health. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is a board clear. You attack the Harvest Golem, you Shadow Flame, the and Zombie throw down, throw down a Molten Giant as well. Oh yeah, and the Molten Giant. That's scary. Then that puts him on a two-turn clock. Because with an empty board, so hard for Zoot to be able to deal with. Because even a Doom Guard off the top wouldn't allow him to even clear one of the Giants off. There's just no way. I mean, he's at 8 health, so... Like if he drew Doom Guard and then Doom Guard and didn't discard, no, because he wouldn't have enough mana. Would not have enough mana. Whoa! Uh. This seems like a strictly worse play. He's pres he's sort of. Not allowing his opponent to heal for five health, but putting yeah. six, six less power on the board. I don't, I don't like Instead that. Instead of having a eight six, he has a two three. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think I like to think that Flybird is probably tired as well. We'll give him that. Yes. I thought he was playing really well. Yeah. Know. It's like, you know, it's, it's obviously hard to play flawlessly. Yeah. Let's be real here. We have the luxury of being able to see both hands as well, so it's definitely less stressful on our ends. I'd say he's still but, probably um, in a good spot, but still. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, Siphon Soul is great. Like, that's that's what you need. You need life gain to get past, to, like, be the final tick in the box where you're like, okay, now I'm safe. Man, just can't get over how that should have been a mountain giant attacking the face. Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> Instead, it's a measly two damage. Oof. Well, I think that's going to do it for game number four. I don't see a way for Ozzy to get out of this. No. And uh, from this, that should mean that Firebird is going to take the series and then advance it tomorrow. And you know what? It's the finish line anyways. It wasn't the most graceful of finishes, but he got the job done. Yeah. He took a wrong turn at the end of the race, but he still managed to find his way to the finish line in the first place. The arrows that they Ooh. put up in races. Well, he has to uh um, guide him. He has to like have power overwhelming and kill off the giant so he doesn't die. Then his follow up is like Void Walker and Dark Iron Dwarf, and then his opponent just bullies him from that point on. Oh, hey, of course you, sign, you can sign the Twilight Drake as well. Well, Goose, or Ozzy, wanted to call him Goosey. Goosey. Mixture of Ozzy and Gooby. Yeah, he's staying alive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, this is pretty problematic. Because he'd, he's going to throw in a lot of damage into that. A lot of potential damage to that boardwalker. Nah, it's fine. You just uh, bomb it. Bomb it, okay. Yeah, and then just push. Mm -hmm. You're perfectly fine with it. Eight health feels like 30 health. Like, as long as your opponent doesn't have something outrageous to kill you right now. Like, um, soul back to back soul fires, and you're like, ah, I'm good. But that should do it, and uh, well, Flybird's going to be the second player behind Gooby Sencho to go through as Ozzy tried his best, but looks like he's going to fall over short here one three. Yeah, you can see Flybird, a smile leaks across his face for the first time yeah. this evening. And of course, very late for those guys. I'm sure he'll, he'll be happy uh, to get some sleep. I, I think these guys might have to play the, the finals for the actual cup. Um, we won't be broadcasting that, of course, since both these players do move on to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of money on the line, but maybe maybe those guys can postpone it till till tomorrow or something because it's to the wee hours in the morning for them. But congratulations to Flybird joining Gooby, of course. You can see that bracket on your screen. That match that we just saw was actually a rematch from earlier in the day, and Flybird came out on top both times. So we will be seeing Gooby and Flybird tomorrow taking on, of course, the three players from last week. 
Zelay, Sho, and the newly acquired by Temple Storm Magic Amy, joining the invites Trump, also Temple Storm Hyped, and of course Zixo. So it's going to be really fun stuff tomorrow. That's right. You can check out all the information uh, about the cups that you want to sign up and play in too. You can go to esl.gg forward slash legendary series. Find out more information about the times. It's Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, as well as checking the standings. Who's in, you know, maybe you don't want to play. You just want to find out more information, whether it's for you know, your own personal reading. Go ahead. Check it out at the, the, the link that you see. Also, while you're on the ESO website, check out all of our sponsors that are going on for uh, the promotion of this broadcast, which is at ESL.gg forward slash Newegg Esports. There's all kinds of discounts for Cooler Master, Crucial, Western Digital, uh, and just you know peruse around through what Newegg does. They really help a lot of our broadcasts out. So definitely support those who support us. We're done for the day, TJ. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow here at twitch.tv forward slash ESLTV underscore Hearthstone. Hope you guys hit the follow button channel, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Once again, it'll be the main event for week six here at the Legendary Series. Do you have any last words, TJ? No, uh, just excited to see Gooby in action. Of course, he made it through that 500-player uh, Open Cup twice now, and of course, Flybird as well. We'll see how they match up with uh, some of those bigger names tomorrow. All right, well, have a good night, guys, and we'll see you guys for the main event tomorrow here on this channel.